Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Nice to see you again. We're back in the fish room. So while I take a break from coat 375 of Mega Tank, I wanted to talk a little bit about the rest of the fish room and a little bit of the frustration that I'm having at the minute. If you have followed the channel for a while, you'll know this is my second fish room, my old house. I had a small micro fish room, a slightly larger version in this house and we're still getting it into some kind of semblance of order. But the main thing I want is an auto water change system. I had one in the old fish room. It makes life so much easier when you have multiple tanks. So I want one in here. At the moment, my main challenge is what am I doing with wastewater? An auto water change system relies on a couple of points. One, I have to get water into every tank. I would achieve that the same way I did in the old place. I have an HMA filter there, a heavy metal axe filter. You can see it on the wall down here. It has a fine five micron filter sediment filter at the first stage and then a couple of stages of carbon uh, which takes out all the toxins in the water and I can drip, I can run lines into each tank and drip into the tanks. Check, that bit's ready. Then I would need to overflow the tanks so they have, they have their way of not flooding. So I would drill each tank um, as this one over here is, as you can see that, um, that would then run into some kind of central pipe system and away somewhere. Not done that, but we need to do that. But in order to run it away somewhere, I have to have a somewhere. So at the moment, I'm just changing tanks normally, stick a hose in, put it into this water butt. This water butt then has a sump pump, which pumps the water somewhere. Not happy with what it's currently doing. So we're going to attack that stage next, which is the where am I going to pump it stage. My initial plan was to pump it into, we've got a soil pipe up here which runs from one of the bathrooms, one of the ensuite bathrooms in the house above me, come in the garage which is under the house. I don't want to use that because that might not stay forever and it's rickety as basically. <laughs> so we're not using that and it's also terribly wasteful. I don't want to waste all this really good nutritious water. I've got quite a big garden, we can use it for that. So I have a plan of where I want the water to go. I just need to get it there. So we're starting here, big powerful sump pump. This is where we want to go. So it has to go there, runs in a pipe, which runs all the way over there. At the moment, it's just kind of looped there. And at the moment, I just connect a couple of hoses and it sticks it out there to the driveway and it runs off down the street. Not brilliant, not perfect. But where I want to get it is, I'll show you, it's quite far away. So we come out the garage. So as you can see, that's a bit of a trek we've got to get there. I think the best route to get there is to take this pipe that's connected to the sump pump and drill through this wall here. Through this wall here is basically a big void. And the way we access the void is through here, the scariest hole in the world that hole over there. And the way we access the other side of that wall is we climb through this tiny, not graham shaped hole. So I'm gonna make an attempt to get in there to the scariest bit of the house and see if I can show you what's underneath. Right, my wife is currently behind the camera, pissing herself laughing because she thinks this is gonna be hilarious. Large man tries to spit through a small hole. I'm not really sure how the, what's the best way to get in here. You just drag yourself through. I need a bar up there to hold on to. Mm -hmm. That'd be easier. Yeah, that's not going to work. Ow! Need it. 
So, come with me into the scary underbelly of the house. So, that's the fish room over there. Behind this wall is the wall that we need to drill through. Um, through this massive of wires and cobwebs. So that's the back of the fish room wall. That's where I want to drill through. Well, they need to run pipe work or hose or something all the way up here. This is the this is the bit I definitely don't fit in. Hmm. That's the wall where the IBC is behind that at the other end. Oh, my balls. <laughs> What's this I'm sitting on? Right in my balls. What's this? So graceful too. So now that that slightly undignified business is out of the way, the way it should work or it will work is I just have to root a hose, a pipe, whatever it is, there somehow. The actual functionality of it, so this is currently the end of the sump pump. This is what's connected to that water butt I showed you earlier. What I do at the moment is basically just get big long pipes like this. Connect them up with push fit. And it runs off out down the driveway. So I'll show you how it works. But the premise is sound, it's just getting the pipes or the hose there. So we just connect these. The, the driveway obviously is a big hill down out into the street into a drain at the bottom of the drive. Let everything run out that way. It's kind of needs must, but it's not a very good solution. So I use my old water changing hose, which made the journey from the old house with me. Just a case of into the tank, start a siphon into the water butt. The water butt has a float switch on it. So as soon as the water rises to a level within the water butt here, it kicks on and starts spewing the water out. So we'll leave this draining and I'll go and point the camera at the other end of the hose so you can see it coming out. So, as you can see, not the most elegant of solutions. So that's what we want to change and get a better version of and stop wasting all that water because that's really good for the garden. So that's how I've been getting by with water changes so far. I mean, it's fine and all, but it doesn't meet two key requirements that I've got. One, it won't handle an auto water change because obviously I need to set it up and get the pipes, make sure they're together, get them out the garage. Um, and then I'm wasting the water. So that's the two main things that I want to change. So I think the system's fine use this water butt as my kind of overflow, drain all the tanks into it and have it, when it gets to a certain level, pump the water somewhere. I just need to change the somewhere. So 
not going to happen today because I physically don't fit. I, should, I physically just fit through there, I physically don't fit through that other gap. So I need to figure out whether or not that's going to work. But otherwise, we're kind of there. So this is my refill line, this is how I refill my tanks. Um, because I'm spending a lot of time down here at the moment, it's fine because as I paint mega tank, I can do all my water changes, come back and just move it along manually. It does the job, it's, it's not too bad, but it's ultimately not the goal of a self-sustaining fish room. Well, we have you here, let's just take you through a wee tour at the moment. So in this tank, we have the name I always forget, the fish that I, that's the, the annual killifish. Um, I shall put the name down here because I can never remember what it is. But absolutely stunning, these guys are fantastic. So I've moved them in here just to free up some of the other tanks over this way where we have the discus. They're still doing fine. You can see the magnificent eruption there in the middle. Um, but fantastic quality discus from Martin Ung. We have next to them, I've just moved the angels over there. They were in the other rank across the other rack across the room. But I think I've upset them by doing the water change because they're all hiding at the back. Uh, this tank, which is in need of a bit of a scrub, uh, has the stairby corridoras. So I think there are 12 of them in there. Happy enough, but again, they're just these are all holding tanks. This is waiting for something bigger and better to happen. Down below them, we've got the main brood of the Martin Ung discus. Uh, all happy and going, where's my food, big man? Why are you standing there and not feeding us? But again, oh, looking very good, if I must say so myself. Next to them is the Congo Tetras. Fast becoming my favourite little tank at the moment. Again, just a holding tank. We're going to be setting up an African tank as the subscriber tank. I've almost decided, almost decided that that shelf of rubbish there, six foot by two foot, I might do another DIY tank in there and make that the African tank. It's, we're going to try and do a biotope as much as we can. And I'm thinking those Congo Tetras with some uh, spotted, Congo tetra, uh, spotted Congo puffers. Depending on whether I go for a big, big tank, we might get a group of puffers. Or if we get a smaller tank, we might just get a single, single puffer. And here, oh look at the little grumpy face. We've got the snakeheads. Starting to come out of the shells a little bit, starting to colour up a little bit. Not being the aggressive killers that <laughs> some might have you believe. They're very much like, oh, oh you scared me, ah, oh. But still pretty cool. Still a little bit dull, but that is, they are quite young. But look at that face. So I think these guys are fantastic, but also everything's fantastic. Um, obviously we've got Mega Tank over here, that's still on quote 399. And over in this tank we've got Humphrey, who again is going, what the hell are you doing there not feeding me? Why you no feed? But he's doing well. We've got all the little tanks of Enders, bleh, Endlers, and some Guppy Fry. Nothing currently in the tank next to Humphrey. And then up top, I'm just waiting for a light to be delivered and then I can set up these tanks as well. And then that will be that tank done. <sighs> and there we go. Back to Mega Tank. This tank here, I'm probably going to move, take it from there and put it there because this wall is going to continue um, but if I have that there, that would work quite well, maybe. So as you can see, got a lot of tanks running and still plenty more still to set up. All these uh, racks here, I can go right up top as well and have tanks up there. But I'm going to concentrate on the middle two rows for now. Because I've got, what, four, six, seven, nine, nine tanks currently empty with nothing in them. So plenty to fill them up with. It's just, it's a great problem to have. Gone from not having enough tanks and wanting too many fish and now I've got tanks where I don't know what to fill them with. So it's really exciting going around the fish shops and going, ooh, 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 ooh. So I have some plans, but I don't want to say what I'm going to get yet, just in case I can't get it or I change my mind, because I am changing my mind quite a lot. Um, but yeah, lots more coming in the coming weeks. So if you do like this kind of thing, as always, click that subscribe button. Thank you very much for joining me. 
Friday nights, 9 p.m. UK time, we do a live stream. If you've got any questions, either drop them in the comments or join us in the live stream. And with that, thank you for joining me. Bye. Thank you.